Hello, Asaikum. We were learning the anatomy of thoracic wall and we were read at diaphragm. This is thoracic cavity and this is abdominal cavity. And between the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity, there is a muscle that is called diaphragm. Diaphragm divides these two cavities, the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity. This central tendon is fused with pericardiopharynic ligaments. Let me show you. This is pericardiopharynic ligament and it is strongly attached with the central tendon of the diaphragm. They fuse or say blend with the central tendon of the diaphragm and that's how the central tendon of the diaphragm firmly attaches with the heart and the lungs. When it draws down that's how it pulls all the thoracic cavity down and increasing the diameter of the thoracic cavity. Okay, let's see the origin and insertion of the diaphragm muscle. Diaphragm muscle fibers originate from three body parts. There are three origins of the diaphragm muscle. They originate from the sternum, they originate from the ribs and they originate from the vertebral column. This is the sternal origin of the diaphragm. Diaphragmic fiber originate behind the xiphoid process as can, you can see in this picture that they are originating behind the xiphoid process and where they insert in the central tendon. Two fleshy strips you can see behind the xiphoid process. Then they originate from the lower six ribs and the costal cartilages. All the fibers originating from the lower six ribs along with their costal cartilage insert in the central tendon because all the fibers have same insertion. Three origins and one insertion, central tendon of the diaphragm. Then there is the vertebral origin of the diaphragm. This is a bit complex, so there are two muscular fibers which are shown in the figure. One is right crust and other is left crust. Right crust is little bit longer than the left crust because it attaches one vertebra down. It varies from person to person but normally it a right crust attaches from L1 to L4 and left crust attaches from L1 to L3 to the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral discs. And this right crust also splits to encircle the esophagus. This is esophagus and right crust split to encircle the esophagus. So esophagus pass through the right crust of the diaphragm. These were the curas and another thing you will find in the lumbar region for the attachment of the diaphragm is medial arcuate ligament, lateral arcuate ligament and median arcuate ligament. This is lateral arcuate ligament and this is medial arcuate ligament. The medial arcuate ligament will attach to the bodies of L1, L2 and the costal process of L1 and the lateral arcuate ligament will go from the costal part of the L1 to the 12th rib and third one is the median arcuate ligament that will go between the right and the left cross and under the median arcuate ligament you will find the swas muscle this is swas muscle that is found under the median arcuate ligament here was major muscle. This is the median arcuate ligament in this picture and the iota is running behind the median arcuate ligament. Now come to the openings of the diaphragm. Diaphragm has esophageal hiatus where, from where the esophagus comes as I uh, told you that right crust split to give away to the esophagus. So esophagus hiatus is the opening in the right crust. This is caval hiatus from which the inferior vena cava passes to the abdomen and this is the aortic hiatus and where was the aortic hiatus in between the median ligament. Let's zoom out in the openings. This is aortic opening. Aortic opening lies anterior to the body of the 12th thoracic vertebra between the cura that I showed you in the picture. As I showed you, it, this transmits iota, but it also transmits thoracic duct and azygous vein. So the aortic opening transmits this all three structures. Then this is esophageal opening. Esophageal opening lies on the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra. This is right vagus nerve that passes through the esophagus hiatus 
left vagus nerve this is anterior esophageal plexus esophageal branches of the left gastric vessels and the lymphatic vessels also pass from the esophagus hiatus this is the cavel opening and this vena cava also carries right pharynx right pharynx nerve along with it and the left pharynx nerve pierces the diaphragm separately now come to the actions of the diaphragm this is muscle of respiration this is muscle of abdominal straining muscle of weight lifting and thoraco abdominal pump when diaphragm contracts and it pulls the central tendon down and along with the central tendon the pericardiopharynic ligament that was attached to the central tendon and the pericardium was fused with the central tendon and all the lungs and heart is drawn down and the thoracic cavity expands and that's how area increases and pressure decreases so the air is drawn into the lungs and inspiration is done so the diaphragm is basic muscle of inspiration so the basic muscle of respiration is diaphragm contraction of the diaphragm assists the contraction of muscle of the anterior abdominal wall when the diaphragm contracts automatically the anterior abdominal wall muscle also contract and this creates a pressure and that pressure is used for micturition means for the urination and the defecation and parturition parturition means the childbirth when the muscles are contracted for the childbirth to create the pressure to push the child out it is a weight lifting muscle how when the person takes a deep breath and hold it diaphragm assists the muscle of anterior abdominal wall in raising the intra abdominal pressure to such an extent that it helps support vertebral column and prevent it flexion so much pressure is created by the muscles because of the diaphragm contraction that the vertebral column flexion is impossible it is done by practice thoraco abdominal pump you know the blood travels to the heart anti gravity so it needs some pressure to be pushed up our muscles of the thighs also work as pump to push up the blood and in the abdomen that when diaphragm contracts the descent of the diaphragm decreases the intra thoracic pressure and increases the intra abdominal pressure so things travel from high to low when intra abdominal pressure increases automatically relative thoracic pressure is decreased so the things uh, so the blood travel from the high pressure to the low pressure means to the thoracic cavity and this mechanism assists the return of the venous blood in the inferior vena cava to the right atrium and same is true for the lymph that was all for today we will learn blood vessels of the thoracic wall in next lecture till then khuda hafiz